Hey guys, I'm Heath Manning from Manning Cues. This video is going to be on tipping a uh, billiard cue and uh, cleaning a billiard cue. Uh, how I do it uh, on a professional lathe for a perfect result and the steps that I go through uh, and why these steps are critical to uh, placing a tip and uh, cleaning your shaft uh, to how it plays. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll take you in uh, my workshop and I'll show you the condition of the shaft and uh, then we'll go through the process. Okay guys, we're in my workshop now and basically this video is just showing you right now my lathe that I work on to do all of my uh, repairs. Uh, this uh, lathe is from Joe Porper. It is a Q lathe and uh, it will complete every function needed to make a, a full Q. Um, from uh, tapering the wood down to uh, putting wraps on and uh, something as minor as uh, tips, ferrules, and cleaning a shaft. So I said to you that I'm going to show you the shaft that I'm going to work on. This is the shaft here. I'm just going to set it up top here. This is the shaft that I'm working on. It is a 314, original 314 shaft from Predator. The rear collar has been changed to match the cue. What I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to zoom in on the... Uh, on the actual tip here just so you can see the condition of it it is completely scratched the tip needs to be changed it is uh, pretty low and you can see the grain in the wood it's blue and uh, it's not uh, been taken care of very well so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put it into my lathe and uh, we're gonna start the process of retipping and cleaning this up okay guys the next part of this is going to be uh taking the tip off of the uh, cue so I'm going to put the cue in through the through the lathe here through the spindle it'll come out here in the chuck and what I'll do is I will uh, put a little collet on it so that it uh, holds the cue nice and center in the chuck and that doesn't allow the uh, the chuck to dent the wood of the shaft now I'm going to speed up the lathe here and we're going to take this tip off I'll zoom you in with the camera Okay, we've got the tip off. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, change the angle on the camera a little bit and we're going to clean the ferrule and condition the ferrule back to new. Be right back. Okay guys, now I'm zoomed in on the ferrule. All I'm going to do with this ferrule is I'm going to use uh, a Mr. Clean uh, sponge eraser. Okay, and I'm going to use some 99% alcohol on the Mr. Clean uh, sponge pad and that's going to clean this ferrule right up. It's going to take a lot of the blue out so I'm going to speed up the lathe and I'm going to do that now. Okay, now what you see on that ferrule is that the blue is gone, but you can still see some scratches that I'm going to have to get out. The only way to get scratches out of a ferro is to do a light sand on it. But we'll do that once we've installed the tip. So for right now, all the blue has gone off of that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sand the tip uh, so it can stick. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, now what I have here is I've got a uh, more a tip. It's a medium more a tip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of the package. And uh, when you take uh, a more or other tips out of their package, a lot of times they'll have a glue side and they'll have uh, a side that's supposed to be on the front of the tip. So when we look at, uh, at this tip, there's some writing there saying it's a 14 mil moray tip medium. And on the other side, we've got a picture of a glue bottle. So that's the side that you want to sand. So we're going to put that down and we're going to scuff up the bottom of that. Now when you're sanding, it's very important that you sand evenly, evenly with pressure around each side of the tip because you don't want to sand the tip on an angle. So use very light pressure, sand your tip. You can even twist it around in your fingers just so if you're not having equal pressure it'll balance yourself out. 
So just keep going around for a little while. And basically what you want to do is when you're done sanding, when you're done sanding, you should have grooves in your in your tip and you shouldn't be able to see that logo anymore of the glue bottle. So we're almost there. I'm going to sand that just a touch more and then I'm going to get you back over to the lathe and we're going to install the tip. Okay guys, uh, now I'm ready to install my tip. Uh, what I want to show you is uh, the glue that I use and why. I have found Loctite Super Glue Gel Control. You can find it at any home hardware store. The gel control is what's important. The reason it's important, you can see the color of the bottle. Okay, that's very important. Gel control um, and it's super glue Loctite. Very important that this glue is uh, gel controlled and the reason gel control is because what happens here is when you put glue here and then the tip on it, whenever you hit your tip there's friction and the tip comp compacts and something wants to give. If you use uh, a different type of glue, if it's not a gel base, what happens is with gel it can compress and react like uh, like gel or rubber. It, it has some give to it and it won't crack. If you use a plastic base uh, super glue, it will crack and your tip will come off uh, after a certain amount of time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, take the glue out of the package and uh, I'm going to uh, set up here. Uh, we're going to bring in the uh, tip that I've already got in my tail stock. So we're going to bring that in here so you can see that there. And I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to turn on my lathe, and I'm going to put some glue on this, and we're going to uh, set the tip on there. Now, it's very important um, that when you put the tip on, that it coats evenly around the whole tip. So when I zoom in here, what you want to look for is you want to see that glue shoot out all the way around the whole tip. So we're going to bring that in nice and slow. We want that glue to just smear all over and squirt out just like that. And now we lock it in. We get her good and tight. And we let that sit for about uh, 30 seconds to a minute is all that's going to take to set. And uh, while that's setting, what I do is you want to get that glue off your ferrule. So again, with some paper towels, all you need is a little paper towel and that alcohol spray, the 99% alcohol, just go around the tip and wipe off the excess glue. It will make, uh, it will make a very good bond, this glue. It's flexible and it won't let you down. I'll be back as soon as it's dry. Okay, guys, I have uh, let the tip uh, set. The glue uh, definitely is dry. So I'm going to widen this back here. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to shave off the side of the tip. So what I'll do here is I'll change this angle if I can. So you guys can see it on your end. Let me just set this up here. See if I can zoom in here. So right now you can kind of see that the, uh, the uh, tip is bigger than the ferrule and it is all the way around so what I have to do is I gotta shave off that side and then uh, shape the tip so I'm gonna start the lathe up it's gonna be noisy and uh, we'll take care of that now Okay, so I've got that shaved off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab uh, some 400 grit sandpaper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just blend uh, the uh, ferrule and the tip uh, together so that this line here where the tip meets uh, the ferrule is perfectly aligned. No bump in either direction.
Okay, now I'm not pressing very hard when I do that. And I sand at the ferrule uh, at the same time because what what's that's done is that's got all those little uh, nicks and stuff out of the ferrule. Most times you're going to have nicks in the ferrule from uh, shaping. What happens is people use uh, different tools to shape their their tip and what they do is they end up scratching their ferrule. Take this tool for example. This is called the ultimate tip tool. And what people do is, is they put this on uh, their side of their shaft like this. And this little edge here, right here where my finger is, um, that's sandpaper. So what they do is they put it on here and they go back and forth and back and forth and the sandpaper takes off the mushroom of the tip but it also scrapes your ferrule and it creates some good nasty lines in your ferrule and that's where your chalk and the dirt and uh, uh, sweat and moisture from your hands gets in and uh, it just makes it a complete mess. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put a shaper on my lathe and I'm going to come in and I'm going to uh, shape this uh, tip. I'll be right back. Okay guys, so now I've got my uh, tip tool put on my lathe and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape this tip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it up and you'll be able to see it shape. I'll uh, zoom this in for you. So now what I've got, I've got a decent shape on there and uh, now what I do is uh, I just use a tip tool to just give me that perfect radius and to uh, scuff the tip so it'll hold chalk. So I'm going to speed that up and do that for you now. Okay, so now I've got a really nice shape on that tip. Um, I've got a nice scuff on that tip, so that'll hold chalk. I can just scuff it a touch more there, just raise the fibers on the tip. So it'll hold some nice chalk there. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the shaft out of the lathe, and I'm going to put it uh, on the lathe so we can clean the shaft. Okay, guys, now I've got the shaft set up on my lathe. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use uh, some different uh, solutions to clean the cue. Whenever you have a shaft, um, you never really want to sand the shaft with anything that's really coarse. Uh, the most that you want to use on a shaft anytime uh, is a thousand grit or higher. Um, Predator, for instance, if you use sandpaper on your shafts and they catch you and there's a warranty issue, it voids the warranty. Um, it's not recommended to sand your shafts with anything coarse, uh, really high, super fine grade sandpaper, in my opinion, is okay, uh, a thousand or higher. Unless the customer asks you, or unless your shaft, you want your shaft uh, to be sanded down or tapered down, uh, or if you have some major nicks in it that just can't be uh, uh, taken out with uh, steam or water to raise the, uh, to raise the wood. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a solution to get the blue out of the shaft. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use a thousand grit sandpaper on the shaft just to take off any burrs that may have been uh, risen from the solution. It'll make this really super slick. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a conditioner on the shaft that uh, will seal the cue and make it super super smooth so it just glides through your hand. So step one right now is I'm going to uh, turn the lathe on. I'm going to use a solution in this uh, orange bottle here 
um, and uh, it's going to take all the blue out of the shaft and the pores of the shaft. So I'm going to do that now. So here's the solution that I'm using. Okay, it's gritty, and I'm just going to apply that right on to the shaft. The paper will get wet, and it will stick to the shaft a little bit. So I'm just going to go all over the shaft, and it's going to take all the blue out of the shaft. Now this uh, solution that I'm doing will not harm the shaft in any way. It will not moisten your shaft. It will condition your shaft and it will remove the blue from it. And I'm going to show you this paper towel in a minute and it's going to be completely blue. So here is the white um, paper towel which is now completely blue on both sides. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another paper towel and I'm going to go over that and I'm going to get the rest of that solution off. Now if needed, when you're using this type of solution on your on your cue, um, you can do more than one uh, application, but I've got all the blue out of this now. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, use uh, some sandpaper on the cue and take off any burrs that I have uh, risen. The solution that I'm also using, um, it uh, has... Uh, an ingredient in it called pumice and what that does is that removes all the oils and uh, uh, blue and uh, the chalk and the dirt and debris that comes in off the table and off your hands so I'll be right back and we'll do some sand. Okay so we're back I've got uh, some thousand grit sandpaper it's very important if you are going to use sandpaper on your shaft that you do uh, equal sanding it's a lot easier to do on a lathe than by hand but basically you don't want to uh, sand one spot more than another. With a thousand it would take you a very long time to create a rut on a cue to make one spot smaller than another but if you do choose to use something more coarser you can uh, create grooves in your shaft if you just sand in one spot. So I'm going to hit this with a thousand real quick Okay, now we've got a really, really soft, really smooth cue. So now all that's left to do it is seal it and condition it. And to uh, seal the ferrule and varnish the tip. Now, not everyone will request uh, a tip to be varnished, but, but I do it. So I'm going to take you through that right now. I'm just going to focus the uh, camera here right on the tip. And I'm going to show you what varnishing a tip is. Now when you varnish a tip, you don't want to get any of this solution on your ferrule. This is a dark solution, and what this, uh, this stuff is called, it's called tip touch, okay? It's called tip touch, and it's in a very little bottle. And I'm going to turn the lathe on now and show you exactly what it does.
Now that will dry on here fairly quickly. And I'm going to put a couple coats on. What this does is it gives the outside of your tip just a little more stability. And it uh, prevents your tip from mushrooming uh, as quickly. And it also gives your tip a really nice look. So now you've seen the, the color change of the tip by putting this on there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to buff it and it's going to come out real nice and shiny. And you can see that shining up now. Okay, so that's done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, seal the ferrule and the shaft. So first thing I'm going to do is seal the ferrule. Okay, so now we've got basically a cue that looks brand new, ferrule and tip. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I am going to back this back out and I am going to uh, condition the shaft now and um, this will uh, finish uh, cleaning and tipping the shaft okay so I've got my solution I'm gonna put it on the shaft now see that go on the shaft hopefully just an equal coat all the way along you can even put this on the collar and the ferrule and the tip you put it on grab another piece of paper towel and take it off and now your cue will feel amazing and it'll be super slick Okay, so now we've got uh, we've got a beautiful looking shaft. The uh, tip and ferrule are back to what they should have been. Let me just widen this out here. I'm gonna take the cue off the lathe here, and I'm gonna show you how the cue looks now. Okay, so here's the new tip and ferrule. It's absolutely beautiful. There is uh, no marks or anything in the ferrule anymore. It's back to completely original. And uh, it's got a nice varnish on the tip, uh, brand new tip, and the shaft is very, very smooth. That's how, uh, that's how I uh, clean and uh, maintain shafts. Um, this is uh, a very good way to have your uh, tips done by a professional. You can do them by yourself, but it is a real pain in the butt. So uh, if you have a professional to do it, I'd recommend it. It's great for your cue, uh, and it's great for your game. When I give this shaft back to the customer, he is going to love it. He will uh, tell other people how much he loves it, and uh, it does bring a confidence to your game because you feel like you have a new stick in your hand. And uh, it's better than new. It is so slick, so smooth, no restriction. And he's going to have many, many games of fun with this. I'm Heath Manning of Manning Cues. I hope that helps, guys. Thanks.